okay, finally. I've got like so many books that I've read jumbled up in my head and I'm just trying to get everything out. Okay, so the story behind this book is I went to the bookstore and I just found this. I just happened to walk by and I was looking at the books and I saw it there and I was like, hmm, okay, I'm going to look at this book and I picked it up and the first page was crazy. So I got the book. Hold on. Let me let me show you. So the first page starts off like this. He didn't even know he was dead. I I had just shot this guy in the head, and he's he's still standing there giving me S H I T. That was enough. I read that, and then I bought the book. So this book, Wounds, is a collection of six short stories. So they're supposed to be like horror, thriller, you know that that area of story. So, okay, so the first story is called Atlas of Hell. And so this story kind of revolves around this bookkeeper. And this bookkeeper has connections with this bad guy. Um, and so what happens is he basically gets hired to go find an atlas. And he has to go to this like swamp area and it's like, not so great he got there by boat and it's like a little um I, I don't know how you would call it like a swamp hut house type of thing and he goes into this house to look for this atlas and the atlas is not like a regular atlas that you would just you know go pick up and bring back it has powers it's protected and there are other people guarding it and wanting it so it's about how this semi pretty regular guy gets pulled into this and has to go you know accomplish this mission I guess to get this atlas how do I say that the diabol diabolist di diab the second book is called the diabolist and so this book was pretty interesting to me because it was it's kind of half alien half interdimensional ghost monster being type of story um it's basically about a girl whose father passes away and she goes into his like basement workspace that she's not really allowed in after he dies and she discovers this creature in a cage and she tries to figure out like where it's from what it does all those types of things and um she kind of makes like a light connection with this being and this being's been watching her for a long time so it's kind of like that dynamic between both of them versus this creature kind of narrates through the whole story here and there so like you can kind of see it see its perspective when it comes to how it's interacting with the world it does it's never left the cage and um it was it was interesting i really liked it if you want something a little weird, something you haven't really experienced reading before, that was a really good story. I really like that one. Uh, a few points about that one. I really liked the way he talked of not only about like narrating and talking about this creature, talking about what it looks like, what it's like, and what she's like, the girl, but he did a really good job of kind of speaking through this creature's mind and its perspective of the world and trying and it trying to understand what's going on and i just i don't know i really liked i liked that he did that and he did a really good job next story is skull pocket okay one thing about this one and i think it might be just me i didn't quite understand the story i don't know maybe I should I should have reread it or I don't know what it was it's kind of okay for what I've understood it's about um there's like the human world okay and then there's this world of these like ghouls and they recruit I guess you could say recruit uh children I think every year every once in a while into their like home and they kind of tell them the story about um, the first group of their 
group of people who went out into the human world and interacted with people at a fair. And so it's about how these, the whole story kind of revolves around him reminiscing um, the story and talking and narrating it to these children. And so he's talking about how they went there and their interaction with people and what they did, what they saw, the uh, behavior they observed in people and what they felt about it. In the fair every year, they have a freak show. And so these kids go to this freak show and see a mermaid and this orchid girl and they're kind of mesmerized by all of these things but they're also observing the behavior of the humans who are watching these like freaks and um i think he did i think i liked the way he described the way these kids saw humans and human interaction and the things that they saw and, and I liked that aspect of it, but for some reason, I didn't quite understand the story completely. The next one is called The Maw, M-A-W, The Maw. And so um, this one, oh yeah. So um, this one is takes place, it's like a dystopia, short story kind of thing and it's it's the first time i ever read any dystopian themed story and i really 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 liked it like i didn't think i would like it i was kind of like when i see these books at the library or see them recommended to people i would always kind of be like mm, i don't know i don't know if i'm gonna like that maybe there's like a way too much like action and fighting and maybe not my thing but i read this short story and i really 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 liked it so this story is about an old man who lives in this like post-apocalyptic world where he was saved by a group of people who built a refuge for all humans that survived this um and this was caused by these creatures called surgeons and um Surgeons and Wagoners, I think is what it's called. And um, so it's about how he wakes up one day and he realizes Maria is missing. Um, uh, and Maria is his companion. And now that she's gone, he's like, oh crap, I gotta go back and get her. So he hires a girl, a teenager, to escort him back to his old residence to find Maria. And so she, he pays her and she's like, okay, well, yeah, fine, whatever. And she tells him, hey, you know what? Maria's probably dead. If she didn't make it back with us, she's not there. But he's like adamant. He's like, no, I gotta go find Maria. So... She's like, all right, well, I'm getting paid anyway. I'm going to take you till there. And it's kind of like in between where he's trying to go find Maria and thinking about like, you know, where she could be, why she left, all those types of things versus this teenager who's obviously much more fit and athletic than he is at his old age, thinking about how dangerous it is, how dangerous it is for her to be out there escorting him when this person he's looking for is probably already dead and about how she's kind of contemplating whether she should just leave him there or not and save herself so i really liked this one the fifth story is called the visible fifth and so um this story was at first when i started reading it i was like it seems kind of bland compared to the rest of the stories because there's like you know, aliens and ghosts and magical stuff and all of that and all the other stories. And this one seemed like, hey, nothing seems to be happening. But as you keep reading, it kind of really picks up and it becomes more thriller-like, I guess. Yeah, more like a thriller. And then all the weird stuff starts kicking in, all the, like horror, supernatural stuff. And then you're like, oh, okay. So... 
basically the story is about a man who works at a bar and one night when he's working these guys get in a fight and there's like this group of kids or well, kids as in like younger adults sitting in at the end of the bar and they get up and leave and he finds a cell phone so he decides to keep the cell phone with him and he so he opens up the phone to text whoever it is that messages him and tell them that hey your friend left their phone here blah 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 come pick it up so he does that and then he gets curious he starts going through the phone and he comes across a video and this is it's a pretty gruesome video of someone getting murdered at first he's like is this real like am i what am i watching and so he watches the video but doesn't turn it into the police which is yeah i mean it's it's part of the story so he keeps the video with him and you know the, he's getting messages that are kind of weird and don't make any sense and he's just like whatever he leaves the phone there in his house and he kind of goes on with his day weird things start happening around him and it doesn't make any sense and then it later kind of starts you know it all starts kind of coming back to this phone that he found it picks up and it's really interesting i love the dialogue between the characters in this story i think the dialogue was the best part in the story i really liked the way each character was so different and they interacted with each other even like some of the arguments they had and just like the whole processing of what's happening to them when they were discussing it was really interesting and i really like that one so the last story in this book is called okay so the last story in this book is called the butcher's tale and so this one is very different like i know i'm saying each story is different they are really different from each other which is you know i don't know how he did that but he did they're very different from each other this one was like way different from the previous story which was the visible thing so this one is very this one's like this one's got like it's got pirate stuff it's got the satanic cult stuff it's got creatures like monstrous creature things it's got everything everything that you wouldn't think would be together is in this story so um this story is about satanic cult member that gets sent to kind of assist this pirate on his expedition into like this hell's realm type situation and so they're going there for their own um their own work their own expedition i guess to like seek power and etc etc um if i tell you the rest it's kind of it'll give parts of the story away and then this satanic cult member is also going there for his own reasons so it's kind of like they've both got their reasons to go there together and so they're kind of accompanying each other on this trip the pirates got the ship cult member guides got all like the stuff he has to do to get in and so um they assist each other and then the cult member he's also on board with I guess like you could call him like a bodyguard creature thing that's supposed to help him and protect him from these pirates in case anything goes down. And so this guy has been paid to watch the cult member, but he's got his own thing going on too. And so it's kind of like, you know, things don't work out too well for all of them. So I guess you'd have to read it to understand. but it's it is also a very interesting story um all in all i thought all the stories were interesting all of them were good in their own way cuz they were so different from each other usually when i read stories they kind of interlink somehow if anything this author nathan ballingrod or nathan ballingrod i'm not sure how to pronounce the last name uh he's a really good storyteller sitting around and someone's narrating the story to you and it's 
it's so interesting. Like it, it's so like out there, and I really like that. I like that it was different from, you know, the usual that you would read. And you know, I like my you know my pirates and my aliens and some spooks, and this was great for me. So if you like if you like kind of like thriller stuff and crime stuff along with supernatural stuff and like alien stuff is this is kind of like a mix of all of those things put together so i would say this is good if you want to read it you should read it and now i'm going to stop talking bye